We want to answer the question, is the binary operation for each of these examples? There's going to be five examples here. Is it associative? And I'm also going to answer the question, is it commutative? If the answer is yes, give a brief reason. If the answer is no, just give an example. It's called a counterexample. Subtraction of integers. Is it associative, yes or no? No, it's not. Why? One example is good enough to show it's not. Associative, no. Uh, for example, you know, pr pretty much an arbitrary kind of example probably works. I put seven minus two in parentheses, then minus three. That means five minus three is two. If I put seven minus in parentheses, two minus three, that really means uh, seven minus negative one, which is eight as one example. You got to be careful. Is it commutative? Well, of course not. Seven minus two is five, but two minus seven is negative five. But wait a minute. Isn't subtraction just adding the additive inverse? And addition is commutative, so why not subtraction? Is it because it means something different? Seven minus two really means seven plus negative two, but two minus seven means something different. It really means two plus negative seven. Those are different sums. So if you, even if you think of subtraction addition, as addition, it's not commutative because it's, it's a different meaning in each case. So that's also no. Division of non-zero rationals, is it associative? A little weird to think about this example, I think. It's not. Uh, okay, let's do the same kind of example. Is seven divided by two all divided by three the same as seven divided by two divided by three? I hope it feels like those would be different. Right? And the, to be associative, those would have to be equal. But they're not. Thinking about how to do your fraction arithmetic, seven halves divided by the three is the same as seven sixths. And seven divided by two thirds is the same as seven times three halves is 21 halves, different. Is it commutative? Nope. That's also no. Seven halves, for example, does not equal two sevens. Function composition of polynomials with real coefficients. As far as the associative property goes, uh, the fact that it's polynomials with real co coefficients is kind of irrelevant. The answer is yes. Effectively, you should remember, you should always remember this, maybe for the rest of your life, function composition, no matter what the functions are, as long as you can compose them, is always associative. Function composition Assuming you can compose the functions, you can't always compose two given functions because their domains and codomains images might not match. Function composition is always associative. F of G, okay, how, how should we write this? F of G of H where g of h is done first, I could put the little circles in here to emphasize function composition, but I'm not. What does that equal? That equals by definition at, at a value of x, it equals f of g compose h of x. Parentheses get a little overwhelming here, which equals by definition f of g of h of x. Yikes. Does that also equal F compose G compose H of X? By definition, that's F compose G of H of X, which by definition is F of G of H of X. 
Okay, yeah, lots of parentheses, lots of saying blah of blah. A bit confusing, but these are the same thing in the end. And it doesn't matter what kind of functions f, g, and h are. Meaning, in the end, these two things are the same. Function composition is always associative. Okay, that was maybe a little too hard. Is it commutative? In general, function composition is not commutative. You may remember that from your past. Now, you can maybe come up with specific examples of functions that when you compose them, it commutes. But in general, it's not, yeah, I mean, you can come up with an example. I mean, if you try like f of x equals 2x plus 1 and g of x equals 3x plus 2, probably they're not going to commute when you compose them. f of g of x, see if I can do this quick in my head, will be f of 3x plus 2 would be 2 times 3x plus 2 plus 1 is 6x plus 5 in the end. And g of 8 f of x is going to be something different. Uh, that'll be 3 times 2x plus 1 plus 2. That'll be 6x plus... Oh, did it work out? Uh, it it looks, like, looks like it did work out to be the same. Okay. Egg on my face there. Uh, I think you can come up with examples where it doesn't work. I was expecting if I just wrote down two linear polynomials that it wouldn't work, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong in that guess, but I'm guessing if you like added a quadratic term and that kind of thing, probably it would not work. Okay, I guess I should check that after class. Multiplication of matrices with integer integer and en entries. Uh, you might remember, I hope from linear algebra, yet that yes, matrix multiplication is commutative. It is closed, even if you restrict it to integer entries when you multiply. But no, it's not commutative. A, B in general does not equal B, A, and you can definitely come up with examples like that. Exponentiation of integers. No. Give me one example. How about 2 cubed to the fourth versus 2 to the 3 to the fourth? Are those the same or different? They are different. This one's ultimately... 2 to the 12th. Well, I could have just jumped there right away by multiplying the exponents, but this one's a lot bigger. This is 2 to the uh, 81st power. It's not associative. The parentheses matter. It's also not commutative. 2 cubed does not equal 3 cubed, or 3 squared, excuse me. All right, that's 8, and this is 9. So just because something's a binary operation doesn't mean it's associative, doesn't mean it's commutative. Binary operation for us means it's closed. Exponentiation of integers is another integer. Oh. <laughs> the book didn't write positive exponentiation, but they probably should have. Positive exponentiation. Negative exponents don't give you integers, right? Two to the negative one is one half. So they maybe should have added the word positive in there, but in, in any case, the answer is still no in both cases. All right, have a good day.